Hey guys, as a continuation of my Discovering Hidden API series, I am going to show you how you can discover and explore some hidden API on which a website has done some efforts to prevent other applications to access it directly. But before I start, I would like to make it clear that I am not supporting or encouraging the misuse of any API or using it for any malicious purposes. This is just an educational video. So this time, it's going to be a bit more challenging but fun. So without any delay, let's get started. Okay, so in this video, we're going to take the example of a website called lecturenotes.in. So this website provides some engineering notes. So it provides the lecture notes for different engineering courses. So these notes are actually contributed by the users of this website. They just upload it and other people can see and comment and so on. So let me just select any particular engineering course and then um, let me select let's say programming in C, a subject. So now these are some notes. So let me click on any lecture note. So now this is a lecture note and as you can see that the lecture notes on this website are provided in the form of a series of images. So this is a series of images, total number of images is 101. So basically there are 101 pages and I can just scroll down to get those pages, right? So if I just click on 101, so I'm able to get the last page. So it means that all the images are available, right? Now, I would like to download the PDF copy of these lecture notes. So in order to do that, I will have to click on download PDF. So let me try that. Okay, so it is asking me to log in. So maybe let me just try to log in. But although I would not have liked to log in on this particular website because there is no point to log in because you are already providing all the material itself in the form of images just for a particular facility they are asking you to log in but that's fine now let me try to click on download pdf again as i have logged in okay so now it is saying that you need to have some credits in order to download a pdf so download this pdf by using one credit so let me click on download pdf uh, okay so it is saying that you do not have download credits you can buy credits in order to download this pdf now this is insane because if you are already providing all the images and now you are asking me to buy some credits in order to download this as a PDF but if I really need a PDF then I am not going to pay any money because I can simply um, download all these image images by getting their image URLs and then generate a PDF out of them. Now I am not saying that it's not a good thing to pay anyone for their efforts but right now if I have the option to download this PDF by simply doing some kind of um, programming then that's good right so that's why i'm gonna just see that how they are generating all these images i will try to get the urls of all those images and then i will fetch all the images of these lecture notes and then i will generate a pdf so let's see how can i do that so let me just open the web inspector so you can open the web inspector by right clicking and then selecting inspect I've already specified or explained the concept of web inspector in the last video of this series. So you can check that out as well. So now um, a web inspector has several tabs like elements, console, network, everyone. Um, so elements provides you all the HTML components of your web page. Console provides the JavaScript console. Network provides you network activity and so on. So now in the elements, um, there is the HTML content, right? So let me search for the image URLs of these nodes so that I can download the image. Okay, so for pic 29, I have the URL here. Okay, so it seems like we have the URL. So this seems to be the URL of this particular lecture note image. So let me try that out. Lecture notes dot in. And yeah, so I got this image. So if I get the URLs just like this for all the images that I can download. Now the first thing that I can notice is that this particular URL is not um, having any kind of pattern. So they are just using some kind of random words, random numbers or characters here after, their tw after writing 29 for the 29th page. So it seems like that there is no pattern for the images of a lecture note. You will have to just fetch all the image URLs yourself. So one thing is that if you are already getting the URLs of all the images in the HTML itself, then it is a very simple web scraping task. You can simply do web scraping of this HTML page and you will get all the image URLs and then you can download the images. So now let me see if I am able to get all those image URLs or not. 
so first of all um, the id is pick 29 so let me just see what is the id for some other page okay so for this page the id is pick 26 so let me search on this page um pick so you have pick 1 pick 2 okay so in this way you are getting all the picks fine 13 16 19 26 31 Okay, so in this way you are getting all the picks, but I feel that they are actually generating the picks as you are scrolling down. Because let me just try to go down. Um, you have page number 57 and that's it. You do not have any image after page number 57. As you can see, after page number 57, you will have to generate it. Yeah, look at that. It is loading, right? So it is loading, it means that some API call is being made after you have scrolled up to some number of pages and then it will fetch the URL of the um, next set of pages and then it will upload those images there. So this is how this thing is working here. So they are quite smart, they are not um, getting or fetching all the image URLs of the lecture notes and they are doing that as the user is scrolling down through it. So in this way, you are not going to um, get all the image URLs by just using some simple web scraping. So now what I will have to do is that I will have to find the URL of the API which is being called when you have scrolled up to um, a certain number of pages and then you want to get the URLs of the further set of images. So let us try to see the network tab now. So let me just reload this page again. So everything has been loaded. So now let me clear all the clutter. Okay, so now um, let me go to page number, let's say 50. So I enter 50 here and I press enter. So look at that, a request has been made to this particular API. So let's try to see what is this API doing. So what happened was that I was on page one and I put the go to page 50. So obviously they will call some API to get the image URLs of the page number 50 to some other set of pages. So that's why they have called that API and we have found that API and here is this API. This API is getting triggered when you are asking for a set of image URLs for a set of pages. Okay, so the API goes like this lecture notes dot in slash material slash 10913. So 10913 I think is the ID of this particular notes as it is seen here as well 10913. Then you have page 47 and then number of items is 30. Okay, so when you are asking for page number 50, they go back up to three pages so that you can, user can scroll back as well. So they get the pages from page number 47 up to next 30 pages. So let me check out the response to ensure that. So yeah, so the page number is 47 of the first image and here is the image URL. As you can see, here is the path of that image, right? And if I go to the last page, it is 76. So yeah, so page number 47 to 76 will be 30 images. So they are able to generate the URLs of the 30 images by using this particular API. Now, one interesting thing to note here is that this particular API is a get, a get API. So basically they are sending a get request to get the uh, response. And as we know that a browser can simply send a get request by simply um, fetching a particular URL. So if I just try to run this particular API through the browser, you are getting the status as error and the message says you are not allowed. Okay, so let us try to see what is extra thing which is going in the headers. So just for comparison, let me just open the network tab here as well. And let me reload this page. So here is the API call. It is showing red because we got the status code as 403. Whereas here we are getting the status code as 200. So what is different which is leading to this behavior? Let us try to see that. So in the request headers of this particular API, you have something called XCSRF token. So this web, this API is using the concept of CSRF tokens. So CSRF token is nothing but a string containing some characters. So this is a kind of a token. Now we, right now we do not know how is it being getting generated, but all we know is that there is some CSRF token, which needs to be passed in the headers. And when you are making a bare call by simply, um, opening this URL in your browser, you are actually not passing CSRF token in the request headers. As we can see in the request headers, we do not have CSRF token because actually we do not know how to generate it, right? 
So a very simple API call will not work, but if you are running this API call through their own website, then it is working because they are able to generate the CSRF token. Now, um, before we move forward, it would be nice if we get a brief overview of what is CSRF and what is CSRF token. So let's talk about that first. Before I explain the concept of CSRF token, I would like to explain the concept of CSRF itself. So CSRF stands for cross-site request forgery and it's a type of a network attack. So consider that you are running a particular browser on your PC and through the browser, you logged into a website called bank.com. Now bank.com is a banking website on which you happen to have an account. That's why you logged in, of course. So you logged into that particular website and what happened is that your browser now contains some login information or some information about your login session in form of some cookies. So your browser knows that you have logged in to bank.com and now any further request that you will make to bank.com will contain the information about your login session and in this way bank.com will be able to authenticate your request and will be able to take actions. Now on some other tab you open a website called attacker.com which happens to be a malicious website but you do not know this fact. So you opened attacker.com and now there on the attacker.com you saw a very tempting button and you clicked on that button. Now what that button does is that that button will send a request to bank.com to transfer the money from your account to the attacker's account. Now what will happen? The thing that will happen is that since you are making the request through your own browser and that browser knows that you have logged into bank.com so the request that you will be sending even through the attacker.com website that request to bank.com will be containing information about your login session and in this way the bank will be able to able to authenticate you and it will think that it's you who has sent the request to transfer the money from your account to the attacker's account and in this way the money will be transferred. So this is a very serious kind of attack which can happen, right? So this is CSRF, cross-site request forgery. Some other website is sending the request on your behalf to other website and the other website thinks that the request that is coming is actually an authenticated request. So what is the solution for CSRF? The solution for CSRF is to use a CSRF token. Although there are some other higher level solutions as well, but the most basic solution is that you need to use a CSRF token. So let's see what happens while you use a CSRF token. So first of all, when you log in or let's say you just open the bank.com web page. If you open any bank.com web page, a get request is sent to the bank.com web page. So bank.com will generate a CSRF token for that particular page. So a CSRF token is generated whenever you open a web page of bank.com. Now that CSRF token is now contained in that particular web page. Now what will happen is that any request now that is going through your PC to the bank.com server should contain that CSRF token. If that CSRF token is not contained in the request, then that request will be refused by the bank.com server. Now you can think that how this is a very good solution because if the attacker tries to send a request on your behalf, then it does not know the CSRF token because the attacker.com has not opened the bank.com web page it is directly sending a request to bank.com to transfer the money right so in this way by using the csrf token you can prevent the csrf attacks and yeah that's what is cool about it now as we know the concept of csrf token we can use that concept to use this particular api so this particular api which is used to fetch the image urls of the lecture note pages is using xcsrf token as a request header in which it is passing the csrf token now where is the csrf token that is what you have to find so you can just look out for element and there you can search for csrf and you will find the place at which csrf token is being mentioned so basically what happens is that whenever you open this particular web page the website also provides a csrf token for this particular web page so now this is that csrf token now whenever you make a request to you whenever you make any api request to get further set of images this csrf token is also passed so in this way this website is making sure that no one can use their api of getting images image urls without opening this page so it is mandatory to open this particular web page first and only that only then you can use a csrf token op obtained from this particular page for sending api request for getting image urls 
So I have to first extract this CSRF token and then I have sent I have to send request to this particular API with that CSRF token. Now in order to do that, what I have to do is I will have to make a request session. I will have to make a request session in Python in which first of all I will send a get request to this web page. I will extract the CSRF token and then I will um, pass the CSRF token um, when I make a request to this particular API in the same session. So that is what I will have to do. So for that what I'm going to do is I'm going to import the requests library. Then I will specify the URL of this particular web page. The URL is this much. So this is the URL. So now I am going to create a request session. So request dot session will create a request library session for me. So a session is just like um, a web browsing session in which all the cookies are maintained while you are browsing through or, or you know that what websites you have already visited like that. So session is a request session in which I'm going to create a get request first of all to this particular web page URL. So now when I make that request, I get some response which is HTML response and that response will contain your CSRF token. So let me look, look out for it. CSRF token. So yeah, so we have somewhere CSRF token. So here it is in a meta tag. We have the CSRF token. Here is its value. So in order to extract it, I can use some very simple web scraping. So I can do from BS4 import beautiful soup and then I can create a soup object out of it in which I can pass R dot content and I can specify the parser that I want to use. I can use HTML5 lib, which is the latest parser and now soup dot find all. So I'm going to use the find all function or let me just use the find function because I know that there is only one meta tag which is going to contain the CSRF token name. So the meta tag that we are using is this one and it contains an attribute whose name is CSRF token. So I'm just going to find that attributes is name should be CSRF token. So look at that. We get that element and in that element, I want only um, content attribute. So look at that. In this way, I have got the CSRF token. So this is the CSRF token which I can extract every time I open this particular web page. So now I know the CSRF token. So till now what I have done is that I have opened this web page. If you uh, if you try to um, see it in terms of what is happening in the browser. So if you compare it with what is happening with browser and what you're doing here, you have simply opened the web page and you've got the CSRF token. And here we have that right now. The second step is to actually call this particular API. So we just copy the URL of this API. So API underscore URL is this. Now in this API URL page number is set as 47. Let me make it variable by putting a placeholder. So now API URL dot format. Let's say one. So basically I'll be using um, I have set it like this because I will be sending a request to get first of all first 30 pages, then next 30 pages and so on. That's why I've kept this variable. So API URL dot format one will give me page number one and up to 30. If I put 30 here or let's say 31. It will give me page number 31 up to 60 and so on. Now API URL is this. So what if I set a request r equal to ses dot get API URL dot format 31. Let's see what happens r dot json. So right now it is saying that an error has happened. Why is it happening? Because even though I'm using the same session, but I am not passing the CSRF token in the header in the request headers. So here is the CSRF token which is being passed. So this is the name of that tag so I can just do headers or let me make it here headers equal to x CSRF token which is equal to the CSRF token we just scraped so now we have the CSRF token as well so let me just pass headers while making the request so now if I check that JSON look at that we get the complete output so the API is not working is now working fine and you are getting the image URLs of all the lecture pages. So let me just copy it and let's check it out. Lecture notes dot in slash that particular path and look at that you're getting the image. So in this way, we are able to make this API work by using the request session and the CSRF token thing. So now what is left? The only thing that is left is um, I can send a request for X in range. Let's say from one, I want to go up to the total number of pages, which is 101 right here. 
so it is for x in range 1 up to 101 with skipping 30 pages at a time because in one call we are getting 30 pages so api url for each call will be api url dot format x so it will replace this particular value with the page number and then we will send the request ses dot get in which we will be passing headers equal to headers that's it and finally we will get some output okay so what was the output that we were getting r dot json was giving you all the pages right so it contained a key called page so it is now a list of all the pages so i'm just gonna create an empty list called data in which i will save all the image urls so data is an empty list and now when i send the request i will save the output to data so data dot extend r dot json page so i'm using the page key which contains the list of all the image urls and saving that to data list so let us see what data contains now so look at that data contains all the data and what is the length of it it should be 101 and yes it is 101 so now we have got all the image urls you can just try it out data for let's say 49th page so i will just put here or let's say data 50 so it will give me the data for the 49th page so it is Okay, so it will give me for 51st page, sorry. So it will give me the path for the image that is for page number 51. So now the only task that is remaining is that I can create a folder on my desktop and in that folder, I can save all the images. So I can download all the images by writing a very simple loop for i in range, let's say, for i in range, length of, or I can simply do for row in data. So I can take one row at a time so how does a row looks like data zero so this is how a row looks like so for row in data um, image url is https lecture notes dot in plus this particular path so it is row path so now i know the url of the image the, act, the complete image url so i can simply send a get request to this particular image url and then I can save it. So in order to save it, all you have to do is you have to specify a path. So with open lecture slash. So where do I have to save it? Lecture slash. I will have to. So let me just use the page number for the file name. So lecture slash dot jpg dot format. So I will just put the page number here. So it is row page number like this. And I will op I will be opening it in write binary mode, right? So as f, so I'm opening it as f f dot write r dot content. So I'm saving all the content of the image in the image file in this way. So let me just run it and let us try to see lecture file. Okay, so look at that in the lecture folder, all the images are getting saved like this. So we have just run a loop which is saving all the images for us now. So in this way, we are able to save all the images at once. So yeah, so this was what we wanted. Now you can simply check out for any kind of PDF library or any kind of image library, which allows you to convert a given list of images into a PDF that can be done very easily. And then you can generate a PDF out of it. So the main motive of this video that we wanted was, is now clear. The main motive was to crack actually this website the api crack the api and we have cracked that api by trying to find out the concept of csrf token and then passing that creating some session and so on so i hope you got to learn something new today and if you still have any doubts you can put them in the comment section below and that's it from this video thanks for watching